Um, so good day class once again. And uh, again, this will be our last class for Terraform. And uh, you know, uh, again, Terraform is very, very important, guys. You know, I encourage you to like, you know, check out more resources and you know that I believe most things we cover in the class, you know, should be sufficient. Just I mean, just read more and uh, try to understand some of the concepts and you know how you can talk about it, especially uh, when you are doing your interview, you know, understand how in the real world, you know, they do more compl complicated stuff with Terraform. I mean, more in terms of infrastructure, what they deploy is way more than what we are doing there. You know, just get the idea, you know, know how to talk about it, what Terraform does and, you know, all the stuff. So, um, but yeah, so, yeah, Terraform is very, very critical and uh, it's, a, it's a very important uh, this thing. So um, today, mm. we have um, three more weeks after this, I mean. I have one. We have three more weeks after this. So how many weeks? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, about three more weeks. We're going to do Ansible. Uh, then we're going to do, we're going to do Ansible after this. Uh, then we're going to do Docker, probably. Then we're going to do some Python. Um, I'm still considering Packer. Maybe we can do Packer as well. Are we not? I thought we were going to talk like Kubernetes or Zana Packer. No, no, <laughs> guys, don't let us oh, go. Kubernetes. Kubernetes is not part of DevOps. It's part of DevOps. But I, it's kind of very advanced. So, for a beginner, I don't really. Maybe later on, if you if if you know Docker, it's not. You know, um, there are many things out there, and uh, you know, Kubernetes is cool if you can know it. But it's kind and of so, so. Like, if you are looking for a job, it's not like a requirement or. What? Yeah, yeah, it's not like, yeah, it's not like compulsory, more like, you know, good to have, you know, so and stuff like that. If you have it, you'll be, yeah, you'll be a bit more, not all company use Kubernetes, but, you know, it's very, very high in demand. And uh, it's a um, matter of fact, I'm trying to take a certification of Kubernetes now. Yeah, okay. yeah, the certification is very tough <laughs> because it's command line, everything, no, no multiple choice. Yeah, everything you you write scripts with the yeah Kubernetes is very advanced. Yeah, but um, yeah, with Docker, you know, because Kubernetes is built on Docker. You know, they deploy Docker to Kubernetes, you know, with the core pod and all the stuff. So yeah, but um, yeah, I will advise you know for now just uh, focus on some other things. Then if you are very comfortable, especially with all this Terraform all these um, like Ansible, like CICD, Jenkins, and maybe you know some scripting. Yeah, then you can start um, building on Kubernetes and stuff like that. Yeah, Kubernetes, it's optional. We're not going to do that in the in the class. It's kind of, we won't set up the environment alone. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, but uh, yeah, we're going to do Docker, which is again, Kubernetes is, um, built on Docker's run Docker container. So then um, we, we can do monitoring too, which is very, it's uh, in most jobs, they want you to know some monitoring tools like Datadog, like Grafana, you know, Elasticsearch and some of others, how to monitor your, like, um, like your EC2 server and other stuff. Again, these people works in a very high, high level. So the, um, the, they need to monitor those things and they, they see in like a dashboard and stuff like that. So monitoring is kind of cool. So huh? we don't know that you sent the link. I was waiting on ask for you like to get the link. I just sent it actually. You are not late. Yeah. Yeah, you are not late. So I just sent it just now. Yeah. So yeah, guys. So this will be our agenda today. Uh, we're going to do the um, recap from last week, then some introduction to VPC. I think I mentioned that last week. VPC is very, very important, you know, um, service on AWS. So um, today we're going to create VPC with our Terraform. Then we're going to deploy our EC2 into the VPC environment. 
So again, VPC can be very complicated, especially if you're just get, getting started because there's a lot of things in between. And trust me, all company, they have VPC, you know. Uh, by default, AWS give us a default VPC. That's why you don't have to kind of worry about it, you know, but in a, an organization, they don't use the default VPC. They have to like build their own VPC and there are so many things you have to do in the, you know, NAT gateway, um, internet gateway, the, you have to define the routable, the subnet, you know, a lot of, a lot of complicated stuff you have to, not that complicated, but, you know, uh, kind of uh, many stuff put together to make up VPC. I'm going to show it on the dashboard, you see what it is. So, but we're going to talk about it briefly and the Terraform uh, best practices, um, understanding state file in Terraform, then we're going to do remote uh, state file using S3 buckets. So uh, let's get down. So last week we just, we talked briefly about some of the common Terraform command like uh, Terraform init, uh, validate. We, we, I don't think we really use it validate. Terraform plan, Terraform apply, destroy, and uh, you know, other stuff. So these are basic and common ones. There are other ones as well that uh, you know, depending on the use case, like paint, like um, configure, like uh, all the stuff there. Again, this would be like the most um, that you'll be using in, um, in most of your, um, in most of your job. So, yeah. So yeah, these are the common ones. So- um, I'm so Sorry to cut you short, I'm sorry. It's okay. uh, please, are we going to uh, integrate the Terraform with uh, Jenkins? Um, we can do that. I mean, uh, I do, maybe we can do that. Actually, I mean, I, I know and I understand what you are saying, but uh, I didn't, I didn't include that in the curriculum. But it's also, okay. it's also something they do as okay. well, like a CI/CD, and you use um, Jenkins to like do the deployment. Uh, to run all the uh, Terraform, apply, and other stuff, which is, but what happened is that in most organizations, they use what they call Terra, Terraform Enterprise, which are very um, well integrated with like all those Jenkins and stuff like that. So, but um, yeah, I'm sure we can do that as well with uh, our local Terraform that we're running. So be, because the Terraform Enterprise is more like, it has a better interface and, you know, you pay for that. And uh, it's a bit more advanced, um, but um, yeah, the, the main thing is writing the script. Actually, you know, writing the script, putting putting your infrastructure together as a script. But yeah, we look into that if we can implement that as well, uh, and they use Jenkins to run the Terraform um, to just do autom automated deployment. So just that in most cases, you want to be very careful in automating uh, deployment like that. It's um, Jenkins, but yeah, it's uh, it's very possible doable. So um, talking about um, talking about VPC, oh, my slide I messed up. Yeah, talking about VPC, VPC, in, VPC in AWS uh, means virtual private cloud, which enables you to launch AWS services or resources into a virtual network, which you've defined. Again, by default, AWS provided us with a VPC, and that's why you don't really notice that when you are launching your EC2, we just go with the default one, and we start from 172.16. whatever, you know, XX. So um, by default, that is the uh, AWS VPC, and, you know, it comes with a lot of things by default. But again, in organization, you want to, like, uh, they, they want to like isolate resources within each other. Like, okay, maybe based on department, apart from the fact that they work with different accounts. Like again, in some organization, they have AWS, like 20 different AWS accounts. They work together. Uh, those AWS accounts, they will be working, they, they will have different VPC, you know, like this account here, this account, uh, your, um, not that, each team will not that you as a person will have your own account. Like the company controls all the accounts. You you just have access to whatever they want to give access access to. So maybe for DevOps engineer, this is the account you are working with. 
the your account the account DevOps engineer is working on has to be has to be in a separate VPC in a separate account. Then they have to talk to other accounts. You know, maybe a developer account, maybe in a monitoring department or any any account. You know, maybe where they are deploying the application, where the developer writing this the code, they have different accounts. So those accounts have to like talk to each other. The VPC have to talk to each other. So it makes the whole like the networking a little bit, you know, again, you know, working on your personal project, you are working on your single account. You don't, you don't really notice all those, you won't really notice or be um, aware of some of all those things. But, you know, when you get to the real world, that's how they work. They have different VPC, which are custom made. You know they made they made it and you know they deploy uh, a lot of resources there and you know they said that, okay this VPC you can talk to this this VPC you cannot talk to this you know all those stuff so again you know I encourage you to you know watch learn VPC very if you don't really understand much stuff in the AWS uh, certification you know things like VPC are very very important you know because they really like it a lot your interviews they will ask you a lot of questions. Again, you, have, you can see from chat here, these are some of the things you have within your VPC. You have your route table, you have your internet connection, which can be from internet gateway, elastic IP, subnet, um, NAT gateways. No, yeah, you know, a lot of things that you're going to have within the VPC. So again, so it's kind of like isolate your resources uh, from the environment, from the main environment. So. Um, I think that's how I can uh, explain it. And, you know, um, looking at this, this diagram, this is how VPC works. You know, this is your AWS account at the, at the highest level. Inside it, you have a VPC. So VPC like covers everything. Then you have internet gateway as well. At the VPC level, you have all these things. You know, this is your instances, EC2 instances standing right here. So, you know, before your instances can even get to the public, like the internet, there are so many stuff you have to do. Um, and they, those are some of the things they show here. So you know, again, VPC for, for a starter sometimes can be very confusing. But, you know, just, um, you know, what sometimes I watch all this video multiple times to really understand a lot of things because it's uh, it can be very complicated sometimes. So, and then one of the basic things you need to know is the IP. IP um, IP CIDR range, you know, uh, you see like 10.0.0.0 slash system, you know, uh, that is VPC. Then within that, you know, you have other um, other subnet, what they call subnet, which is like a subset of the of the VPC. So subnet is inside the VPC, and you can have multiple ones. So there's a way you can like select IP range. And, uh, assign them to your subnet. And those IP range, one, they must not overlap with each other. So you know, there are a few calculations going on there that you know you need to like understand, especially all those slash, you see, you see slash 24, slash 16, and the other all those things. So slash 16 is bigger, it's a bigger size of IP addresses, slash 24 is smaller, and then you know, all those stuff, all those basic stuff. So Again, VPC, it can be a little bit because you need to like know some networking, you know, and trust me, th those are very important for cloud engineer. Uh, this is very, very important. So just try and uh, go uh, through it a little bit. So today um, uh, we're going to talk about variable again. I think we talked about variable last class. Yeah, so, and then we define variable and then we, we I think we use variable in our script in our Terraform script, which we deploy. And this is how uh, Terraform uh, define uh, the centers for uh, Terraform variable. So uh, today we're going to see another way we can use our variable. So uh, some of the best practices, and I think this is very important, you know, when you're doing your interview, these are what you talk about. They'd be like, they want to like ask you deep question, how you use Terraform. So they use what they call modules. So modules is like, a, uh, modules is very um, popular in, in programming world, like uh, uh, scripting and other stuff. Any programming, they have modules. They, in some language, they call it library. So it allows you to like break your 
script into different, um, into smaller pieces. Like, so you just like call it and it's allow reusable of uh, script. We are going to use some modules. You see how modules work. You know, we're going to use that to reduce our script. It will, you see how it works and then, uh, so modules is very popular. And again, in the real world, they use modules a lot. So um, understand what a module is and the, which we are going to talk about briefly in this slide, in the following slide. So modules allow you to like break your code into, um, into like smaller junks and you can reuse them as well. You can call a modules, there's a parent modules, there's a child module, modules and stuff like that. So you make reference to a module like, okay, I want to use EC2, you know, you just make a reference to it in the directory. Then uh, that means you call that module and you know, you, you have access to your EC2 or whatever. So but uh, modules, again, it's very important. That's how they use it in the real world. You see how our script look like when, I, when we get to the distance, it's very long, it's not organized. So you don't want to do that. You, you should understand how it uh, uh, works. Then we're going to version, um, put it in a version control like Git, because again, we've been working so far on our computer, all the code that we've been writing. I don't know if you can see my VS code. Um, okay. So all the code that we've been writing, you see everything is on my computer, right? On my, on my laptop. So in the real world, you are not the only one working on this script. You know, this script, this Terraform script have to be in a central place like a git where, you know, other maybe like five of you or, or four people in the DevOps team working on the Terraform script. So you, you have to like have a central place where, you know, if, if um, David make a change in the code, everybody will see it immediately. So the best way to do all those things is using version control like git. So, and then, you know, um, again, we're going to put our uh, Terraform script in the Git, and you're going to see how that will be. Again, the same thing with Git push and other stuff that we've been doing. But we're going to version control it and just put it in a version control system. Then uh, we're going to manage our state file. You know, again, this state file is very, very important. You know, it's like the key concept in, um, in um, Terraform. So basically what state file before, let me be switching to my distance. Um, please let me know if you can see my screen. Yeah, if we can see it. Yeah, you can see my VS code. So uh, by default, once you run Terraform apply, you, so Terraform, you know, this is our script, you know, on your distance, Terraform will create this file for you, which is a JSON file. This is what they call state file. So this file, you know, it's a lot. It's a, I don't know where this state file is. So it's kind of like, it looks like this actually. So um, it's defined all the, all the requirements within the code, all the, um, it will, it's defined the, the current state of your Terraform infrastructure, you know, and it has a lot of information. Again, you don't need to read it. You don't need to like go through it, but the, the file is very, very important to Terraform because Terraform use this, this file to track all the resources that Terraform deploy for you. So like all the EC2 that we uh, deploy and stuff like that. So Terraform have, they call some of these things metadata. So Terraform keep track of everything on this uh, state file, which is this, this guy is a JSON template. And you know, again, it's very, very important uh, to Terraform and you know, a lot of job they will ask you about state file and you know, how you manage your state file and stuff like that. So this is a state file, a lot of information are there some of them, you know, you don't have to worry about them, but you know, so many information, sensitive information can be there too. And, um, you know, so uh, it's it's very, very important to understand the state file in Terraform. So we're going to see how we can manage it and uh, you know, uh, storing it in a place like S3 bucket on AWS, then we're going to see our variable file. Again, we've been defining, if I go back to my, to our script again, um, okay, if I go, go back to our VS code, which uh, our main script, you know, you see our variable has been uh, directly on the script, you know, again, in the real world, they have a lot of all these variable, a lot of them, because the variable are very, um, their best practices to not to add code 
even though this IP address is better, we put them as a variable instead of add coding them directly in the, in the script. So uh, variable give us uh, that flexibility. And those are the way they use um, all this thing in the real life. They have a lot of variable and this variable should be in a separate file, which we are going to do. So we're going to take this thing out, you know, put it in another file. We, we, we're going to call it um, var dot, uh, variable dot tf, um, and then, you know, we can make reference to it also. So, but um, again, you know, these are some of the best practices with uh, using Terraform. You know, you, you should have your variable file defined separately where you're going to have a, uh, your variables. Then do not store secrets in your Terraform script. Uh, you know, like you, I think we addressed that already. You know, the first lab where we put our uh, secrets and other stuff. Now we just use the profile directly. So this is better way to use. There are other ways to use this like um, using a zoom row and other stuff, but uh, you know, you don't want to put your um, uh, secret ID, access ID right in the Terraform script. It's very, very dangerous. Like, you know, you can get into trouble with that. So these are some of the best practices in using Terraform. Again, module, modules is important, version control, state file, remote, storing your state file remotely. And then we're going to say, so, uh, let's see how a modules work in the Terraform. So a modules is a container for multiple resources that are used together. So for example, you know, I, I talked about VPC, I talked about, you know, uh, we can have a lot of things that Terraform deploy for us, like load balancing, like auto scaling. There are a lot of them and, you know, your script will be very, very long, trust me. If, if we add just um, load balancing to our script, we're going to have more, a lot of, a lot of, because there are many things we need to define, like maybe target group and other stuff. So, uh, so writing all these things, sometimes uh, you don't want to put everything within your code. So if you say to the right here, this is how um, you define a module. So just like this now, uh, they just say modules ECS source, you know, just make reference to the source where this modules is stored. So what's happened is that Right here, we literally have just maybe four lines of code or five lines of code. But this, if you know where this uh, this ECS, if you open this file, you know where uh, you make it because this is like a directory. This code is stored somewhere. This ECS folder is stored somewhere. Um, you know, maybe on your computer, on the Git of or whatever. So it's stored somewhere. Now you are calling it. You are telling your Terraform to use the code that is somewhere, that is stored somewhere to deploy it for you with just two line of code. With just these two line of code, you can deploy what they call ECS, which is, you know, if you know what ECS is, you know that that should be like, you know, maybe close to like uh, 100 lines of code if you want to like write it in Terraform because um, that's what they call elastic container service, uh, just like Kubernetes, but works on AWS. Uh, they use it to deploy. So there are many things you need to define within ECS. So now we, they already write the script somewhere, you know, somewhere they already write the script. What this person is just doing is that they just calling it. This is what they call, you are calling uh, that modules. You are calling the, the, the program, the script. They use stuff like this in Python too. And so there are many uh, languages. So you are calling, making reference to it that, okay, I want to use this ECS. This is the only thing you need to write in the code and you know, it will deploy a very big uh, infrastructure for you. So module is very, very powerful because it's reduced, you know, how you should, the um, lines of code that you should be writing and stuff like that. For example, if I go back to my stuff uh, right here now, you know, you see uh, this for our security group alone, for our security group alone, we span from like, uh, line 31 all the way there. You know, in the lab today, we're going to move this to a module. We're going to move it. You know, we don't want it to be in our code. We're just going to represent it with two lines of code. So we're going to have this stored in another folder. Then we, in our main file, we're just going to call it. So we're just going to make reference to it. So it's reduced. And same thing you can do with all this thing. Maybe uh, your EC2, where's our EC2 as well? You can put it in the module as well. You know, store this in another file. 
you know, then right here on your main script, you just call it, you make reference to it. That's what they call call, which they are doing. Um, if you check our PowerPoint here, which they are doing something like that here. They just say modules, the name of the modules, and then source. You just provide the, the path to the source, you know, uh, and that's it, you know, to deploy uh, whatever that is in that folder for you. So modules is very po popular. Again, modules can be called multiple times, either within the same conversion or in a separate conversion. You know, you can make reference to it in various uh, parts of, um, of your um, Terraform templates. Modules also, um, it can be accessed and referred to, um, to the parts in the modules sources. Just like this one, they make reference to the part. This is the part where the modules is stored. And they, these, are, these are the centers for defining modules in Terraform. Very straightforward. Just provide the parts as the source. And you know, that's it. So again, module is very important. You know, uh, the, um, in the real world, they make use of this a lot. So, um, so version control your gate as well. Again, it's allow you to do better collaboration. You know, again, you don't have to write all the scripts by yourself. Uh, you know, you work in a team most, in, in most um, scenario, you know, you write whatever you can write, you push it to Git. You know, another person maybe check it or you know write their own and stuff like that, or maybe just want to make changes. In most cases, they may have a Terraform script already in place. They're just trying to make some updates and stuff like that. So version control allow you to work together in the team. So rather than we storing our code directly on the computer now, so it's uh, you want to put it in the version control, then it's um, better for management as well. Then um, the Terraform state file, again, this is very important, which I just showed in the in the in, in our code, in our previous code. So it's um, in order for Terraform to create an apply plan, Terraform stores information about your infrastructure. Just like I said, it stores all the information, you know, everything about your infrastructure, stored it in the in that state file. And again, this is generated for you by Terraform. You don't have to worry about writing all those, uh, all this, all this stuff. You don't have to worry about writing them. So Terraform automatically generate that for you. And again, you know, you bet it's very important. You have it on your, um, you have it stored somewhere. So by default, this information is stored locally in your file called Terraform.tf state, which you see here. So by default, this way is going to store uh, this is the file that Terraform will create for you where it's going to store the TF state. And this is just a backup for it. So it will store it on your computer. But again, you are working in a team, you know. So if you if you run this script now, you know, you generate this report, you store it, you store it on your computer. You know, another person is trying to run the same script. You know, they have another thing on there. You know, it doesn't. So that's why they say, we, we have to manage state file in a central location where everybody can like, not just access it, if, uh, everybody can like um, make reference to it. Terraform can centralize, um, can monitor it centrally. So, and that's why we, um, right here we talk about, you know, using like a S3 bucket to store it, which we are going to show uh, in the demo. So again, you know, by default, this information is stored locally on your uh, computer, you know, again, once you run Terraform apply, it will generate that and stored on your computer by default. So until you now put a uh, hard uh, few, few stages, few steps to the script before Terraform, maybe you want to store it in a central location or somewhere which you're going to discuss also. So the state file will not exist until you completely, uh, you have completed uh, at least Terraform apply. So until you run Terraform apply, it will not generate that uh, file for you. So, um, so and the format is JSON. You know, JSON is you know just like YAML and all those. Um, it's Java uh, script object notation. So and the, um, yeah, so that's the format for state file. Again, you don't have to worry about it. But you know, it's the only thing you need to know about state file is you know, how to store it, where to store the state file, you know, because again, if Terraform doesn't see the state file, you can't do anything, 
you can't do anything to your infrastructure. It's like it's a, it's very important. Terraform have access to that file. So how do you manage this file? That is the question. Where is the best way to store the file, the state file? You know, again, the code itself. This is the code itself. You can store that in like a GitHub or you know a version control system. Any anything you are using, but the state file you don't want to store it in the GitHub. You know, and I will tell you why as well also. So then um, we are still on the state file again, because this is very important. The state file is stored by default in the local file, which we talked about now. And uh, when working with Terraform in the team, use of a local file makes Terraform use it complicated. Again, you know, this thing is teamwork. You know, it's not like everybody's running their Terraform like we are doing now. It should only be one central Terraform that everybody's running. So uh, if you have a state file now, you don't want to store it on your computer. You don't want um, maybe DevOps, one DevOps engineer comes to run the, run the Terraform apply, the state file stores on his computer and another person will not have access to that state file. So, and you can't be sending it to each other. You know, it's, it's, it doesn't make sense. So you want to manage it in a central location. Um, so, you know, uh, I'm sure you'll be thinking that, okay, GitHub, GitHub is a central location where we manage code and stuff like that. But what happened is that state file used to uh, usually contain some sensitive information, like very sensitive. Of course, you can store it in a GitHub, but you know, again, no, no company does that. We store their state file in GitHub because again, you can be our Terraform script. Basically, now we are just deploying EC2 server and stuff like that. You may want to deploy like, um, like what's it called? Some certificates, like. Um, um, like databases, RDS databases on AWS, you know, you may have like the user uh, username, the password that have to be there and stuff like that. So although those will not be in the code, but the state file will put everything in the test file directly. So all those sensitive information, you know, if bad guys get access to your state file, they can do a lot of damage, you know, to the state file. But, you know, so that's why you don't want to put them in a place like GitHub. So, and that's where there are, um, there are some alternatives where you can put your state file, you know, which I will show you some of them. But the one we'll be going with in the class is S3 bucket on AWS. So we're going to create an S3 bucket. We're going to use that. And then, so with remote state, so this is what they call remote state file. So again, by default, the state file is stored locally right here you know, your computer, this is the state file, JSON stored on your computer. So now you want to do it, you want to store it in a remote location. Remote just means something, uh, something not local, something uh, away from you or stuff like that. So, um, so you want to store it in a remote location, not on your computer, you know. So, and uh, one of the option you have, which is very popular is S3 bucket. You know, you can use DynamoDB, you can use some other, um, some other services as well, you know, but I, I think uh, S3 bucket is very popular for this um, state file, you know, and uh, again, we're going to see how we can put that in our Terraform script um, before we push it to GitHub. Then um, with remote states, Terraform writes the state data to a remote data store, which can then be shared between all members and the team. So every member we have access to the S3 bucket that we store in the, uh, the state file. So with that, Terraform will be able to manage everything and the, you know, do the deployment, um, do, uh, do the tracking centrally and the, you know, do everything. For some of you that doesn't know what S3 bucket is, it's just a storage, object storage um, service on AWS. And they, um, you know, it's not like GitHub. GitHub is used for storing your code, raw code. But um, you can, yeah, um, S3 is just for like, you can store like image, anything there, you know, zip file, you know, um, you can put some code there too. But um, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, use S3 bucket as our remote state file location to store our state file. And then uh, we're not going to be we're not going to have it on our local computer because again, right now, let me show you my computer to just show you what I'm talking about, about this. Uh, um, I think it's on my desktop. 
if I go to, I think, uh, which part am I, let me see. I think I'm on, okay, my Terraform. If I go to my Terraform now, I hope you guys can see my files. What are you see? This is directly on my computer. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this directly on my, you know, because you may get confused with uh, the distance. This is directly stored on my computer. You see the state file here, the other one. So, you know, again, you are working in a team. You don't want to run Terraform apply and you want the Terraform state to store because each time you run Terraform apply to update that TF state file. So it will give you update every time you run Terraform apply. So if you make any changes there, it will update it, it will update the file. So the file has to be uniform across everything. So if I have the file that is not updated and one of the team member run Terraform apply on their computer and they have the state file there, I don't have the state file they have. So it will cause a lot of conflict and they, you know, again, you don't want to do that. Um, so storing it in a central location is the best way to do it. And the S3 bucket is one of the popular options. So I will briefly show you some of the options we have for um, for state file. If you come here, this uh, Terraform, again, you know, using documentation is very, very important. You know, try and know how to use documentation. You see, um, this is the remote, this is the local. So um, this is the one we are going with, the S3 bucket, and you see the format. You know, we're going to use this format again. You know, don't reinvent the way. You don't have to cram out to write all this thing. The documentation are there with explanation. So this is just telling you about the permission. Again, we are using, uh, the user we are using have admin privilege. So we don't really need to worry about uh, some of all these things. Some of the option is, you know, DynamoDB as well, which I don't, uh, I've not really used before. But again, you know, just go with S3 buckets, know how it works and know how to talk about state file. Um, there's some of the other option right here, you can see a lot of them, even at the factory that we use, this is, I think this Azure uh, console, a lot of them, etcd that you can use to store your state file. You know, again, we're just going with S3 buckets, um, which is, uh, they call it backend. Um, so we're going to see how we can do that in our script. So um, any question guys, before we go move to the lab. So this will be what we're going to do in the lab today. We're going to, um, so did, sorry, did, <laughs> yeah. So we're going to, we're going to implement a state file um, like I talked about, and then we're going to create a state file on S3 bucket, and then uh, we're going to um, create a Terraform modules. That's where you say our modules work. Then we're going to add VPC to our code, which I think I already added it. Again, you know, um, let me, let me share some of the link to you as well. So, you know, with the resources, you can get a lot of all those information. You know, let me just share all this thing with you. You know, if you are writing all this script, again, they used to say, don't reinvent the way there's nothing there's nothing you want to do that they have not done, you know. <laughs> so just know what you want to do. Like for example, we want to like deploy S3 buckets, you know, uh, with Terraform, this is it. The sample is here. You can grab it, you can modify it. You know what to change there, you know. Again, these are, you know, for static website, you know, if you want to add versioning, you want to, if I just copy this, just make few changes there, do my Terraform this thing. So again, just understand how all these things work together. And they, you know, there are so many resources out there, a lot, a lot of things. You see many things you can do with all this documentation. This is from Terraform um, uh, doc directly. They are uh, their website. So, and every tool have this, even Jenkins too. If you go to Jenkins documentation, they have all these things. You know, they give you sample, they will explain some of all those things to you, like, you know, so you is how to figure them out, how to put them together. Like, okay, okay, how do I do this? You know, like when I want to like do VPC, you know, I come here that, okay, I want to create VPC. Um, let's see what we got, AWS VPC. Okay, they tell me this is all what I need to create a VPC. You know, I need to provide the CIDR range and the, or, you know, if you just want to add the tag, you can go with this option. Then, you know, you can, and they explain all these 
all these things, cider block, you know, they say it's required, you know, this is optional. So I can decide that I don't want this, you know. So um, this is optional. Of course, you can add this to it if you want to do all those advanced stuff. You know, tagging to is optional. So this tag now, you know, you can remove it and just have a basic stuff like this. And you have a VPC setup. So, you know, all those things, they have same thing with subnet. Again, subnet is like a child to VPC. You know, subnet will be inside the VPC. So again, you say subnet, this, this is what you need. You know, it's for you to figure out some of all this stuff that, okay, what do they mean here? You know, like, okay, VPC ID, you know, this thing is just saying, for you to have a subnet, you must have a VPC. So VPC ID, you just make reference to the ID of the VPC that you have. Maybe Terraform created it for you or whatever. So, you know, we're going to create all those things. You see how they work and then, you know, you provide this. Again, they define, they explain all those options to you. You know, you can have availability zone there. You know, you can, so you can now be creative and do stuff here. You know, even though right here, there's no availability zone here, but here they are giving you this argument reference. So they are telling you that you can put, right here you can put, uh, beside there you can put availability underscore zone equals to something. You know, so all those things is just about um, um, being know how to, the only required feed there is the cider block, you know, which they say is required. You know, most of them, I think uh, VPC ID two will be required. So yeah, VPC ID also is required. So but other stuff are, you know, optional. And they, again, depending on the use case, but you just need to like understand how to put things together. Again, I wrote all the scripts as well with the help of all this documentation, you know, um, with the help of the documentation, but again, I understand what I'm doing. I understand what I need to change, what I need to add, what I need to like, you know, uh, remove and stuff like that. You know, if I want to call something, what I need to do, apart from that, there's nothing. I didn't write all this on my head. You know, I'm not crazy. So again, this is how it's a real life too. This is how it works, nobody will. Um, tell you to be writing all this thing on your head, off your head, even on the job, you know. So you will have opportunity to be all this documentation are very, very important. You know, I can share it in the in the um, in our team on our team link. You know, um, to, you know, just take a look at those documentation. You know, maybe you want to deploy anything in EC2. You want to play around with some. Other stuff, these are very important. Uh, you can do a lot of advanced stuff with them. So, yeah, I think um, a lot of um, talk. So, let's get down to um, business. So, the first thing we're going to do is uh, let's edit our code. So, first, um, I already um, I added, you know, I think the last time we just add one variable. So, I added another variable just to, uh, you know, there's nothing much here. Then I created a VPC with this subnet. So again, this is what I used to create my VPC, um, the documentation that I just showed you. Then I created a, a subnet. So I created these two feed. So this is the VPC. You don't need anything. This side that range is, you know, some IP stuff that you should understand. You know how this is private IP and that's how AWS AWS, um, you if you are creating VPC, you use your private IP. Now, for let's go to our dashboard. Um, if I if I go to if I go to some of the stuff, if I go to VPC now, um, let me start for VPC right here. You see, by default, we have one VPC that comes to um, by default on AWS. The AWS give us so uh, so anything you deploy, you launch your EC2. It's coming directly. And you see the cider range, this one that we are defined, 172.31.0.0 slash system. So this is the rate, this is the default VPC that um, AWS give everyone on the accounts by default. And again, company don't want this, they want to create their own, you know, they want to create their own custom VPC. They come here, create VPC, you know, put the range there. Of course, you can use this again if you are using. Uh, this, if you remember one of the class we did, we talked about private IP address range. 
you can use like 10.0.0.0. You can use 172.16.0.0 slash 0 uh, whatever to this. So uh, AWS is using 172 range. So then you can use 192, which comes with most of our computer, our local computer, 192.16.192.16.0.0. Dot, uh, I can't remember the term. Yeah, so those are the three uh, private IP address range. And again, from the VPC now, you see there are many things you need to configure on VPC. There are a lot of things. If you go to the left there, you see the subnet. So you have to create all the subnet come with them. And one thing you should know, you see the subnet, everything start with 192.31. So this is because we are using a VPC of 192.31.0.0 uh, slash system. So this last system means that dot 31, these two must be constant in all your subnet. Then the only thing you can change is this. You can change this thing to any anything. This uh, two, uh, dot zero, dot zero can be anything. Of course, no more than 255, but this can be dot 200.1. This can be dot five dot eight, you know, it can be, but the only thing you can change is this. And this is what last system is about. You know, if it is last 24, that means you can't change the first three feed. You can only change the last one. So, you know, some of all those things just uh, kind of understand how they work. Again, this is the fourth VPC that AWS give everyone. And these are the subnet that comes with it. You know, you see that everything start with um, this dash, um, dot three one dot three one then you know dot x x x s or whatever you know you can put there uh, and decide that to you have to go uh, a little bit above more than slash sixteen so again you know check into some net and see if you can understand it again route table you know you need to define it you need to do a lot of things you know by default you know not gateway you know maybe you want to do pairing you know, endpoint, everything. So again, you know, VPC is very important. And again, company right here, they will have a couple of VPC, you know, that they will define within the, it could be just one within an account, then within that VPC, they will have a lot of subnets, just like we see here, you know, all these VPC, they are inside, all these subnets, these are subnets, they are inside the VPC. So, you know, um, it's um, important to just understand the concept of VPC. They will ask you a lot and other stuff. So again, let's go to our code now. So this is the VPC feed, which I just, again, it's um, just a matter of copy and paste. And I don't even have to put this feed there. Then I put the tag there. Um, so right now we should be able to deploy VPC. And uh, the only thing I, I just want to like emphasize right here is where it says uh, VPC ID. You know, last time I think I explained how to like get all this dot dot stuff, you know. So basically this thing is, this is a name you can change. I can put this thing to be my VPC. So matter of fact, I'll change it for me, my VPC. Oh, what am I doing? Um, okay, so you can change this to, um, yeah, let me say my VPC, my VPC. So, um, so I changed this name to my VPC. So now here you are making reference because again, subnet must be inside VPC. Subnet is dependent of VPC. If you don't have a VPC, you can't have a subnet. You know, let me say it that way. So, you know, so you have to define the subnet inside the VPC. So now I created a VPC with this block. Now I want to create a subnet. So they are asking me to reference the VPC that, okay, because again, you can have multiple VPC in your AWS account. So I'm telling um, Terraform now that I want AWS underscore VPC, which is this thing you are seeing here, AWS underscore VPC dot. So right now I will change it to my, so right now I will change this to dot my, uh, my VPC. So I'll change this to dot my VPC dot ID. So what I'm doing is that I'm making reference to the ID of this VPC. This is what ID is. If I go back to my console and I'm just trying to, um, so this is a VPC, 
you know, this is the ID we are talking about. But, you know, we are Terraform this thing. We are not at coding anything. And again, we've not even created our VPC yet. So we don't know the VPC ID, you know, but uh, we are required to supply VPC ID from this uh, to the subnet. So we are just saying that here, yeah, this is a way to make some reference in Terraform script. So we are just saying that these resources, these are resources, these are another one. So we are just saying that, okay, this is what we need. We need a VPC with this name. Then, you know, that's why you are seeing this dot, dot, then dot. Sometimes you can have like dot name here. So for example, maybe you, you, you are asked to provide VPC name. You can have dot name here or dot like ARN, stuff like this, ARN, which is um, Amazon resource name. If you go to your um, AWS again, you see every resource you create, we have like ARN. Um, let me see where our ARN is. Um, can not see the ARN then. Yeah, it's supposed to have the ARN then. Yeah, but uh, you know, you can do all those, um, all those tweaking, just uh, make reference to a certain um, parameter. So now we are doing dot ID. There are a few of them you can do dot. If I just do dot, uh, let me just do dot. Okay, yeah, dot ID. So you can do dot ID, maybe, you know, then right here we need the ID. We need the VPC underscore ID. So then we make reference to this block. So, you know, again, this is the only thing we are adding to our resources. And now, you know, again, when we, when we deploy our EC2 the first time, but it was deployed directly to the default VPC because we didn't specify anything. Now we, I specify that, okay, deploy to uh, this subnet because you have to deploy inside the subnet. You can't just, you must have a subnet inside the VPC uh, to host this thing. So right now we have to specify a subnet ID. And again, I'm doing the same thing, AWS underscore subnet dot public dot ID. If I come here now, this is aw underscore subnet dot public, then the ID of this subnet. And that's what I'm calling at this point. So, you know, just understand some of all those uh, stuff, basic stuff, and the, you know, apart from that, you know, you'll be good. Then again, we have a variable for EC2 size, which is T2 micro. Then we are calling it right here, the var dot EC2. This is the name. Uh, this is the name of our variable. Let me see, what's the name of EC2 um, dash size? So we are now saying variable, you know, again, before I think we had coded it directly, you know, we just say that, okay, we just use, um, we just put it directly there, like, uh, okay, T2 micro. It's still going to give you the same thing, you know, but, uh, but you don't want to add code um, things, um, you know, it's not it's not like a best practice to be at coding a lot of stuff. So, you know, this was how we added before, you know, when we do this deployment, but now I just um, put it as a variable. And, you know, again, you can have a lot of variable stored everywhere. So I'm just going to put the variable back there and uh, you know, uh, var dot, again, just understand some of all these concepts. Then the other ones just like common sense, how to like tweak it, um, to do whatever you want it to do. So I'm going to save this now, you know, um, but maybe before I save it, let's implement state file. So again, let's, um, again, right now we have our state file uh, that is stored there. So let's see what we can, how we can implement uh, remote state file. And then I'm going to go to my um, Terraform uh, documentation again. This is the state file for um, S3 buckets, you know, you don't need any, any, any more configuration than this, you know, then you just have to like edit it, of course, add some of your um, stuff there. So I'm just going to copy this right here. You know, I, I want to show you how everything is built, you know, layer by layer, step by step. Um, there's no distance there. So I'm just going to put it right um, before my variable feed. So um, again, it's good to give comment, um, defining variables. Yeah, so, so I'm going to put the state file right here. So I just pasted it. So I, I want to change the bucket name. Again, one thing you should know, AWS, your bucket name will be unique, you know? So again, no, we don't have a bucket now. 
because we must have a bucket first before we do that. So let's go to our console then. Again, creating buckets is the easiest thing you can do on AWS. So let's go to S3 buckets. Um, then you want to see, you can just click, click. I have a lot of buckets I can use, but I'm going to create a new bucket. You know, you see all these buckets I have there. So you just go to create a bucket or create bucket, give it a name. The name must be unique because this is a global service. Uh, S3 bucket is a global service and the, uh, you, it's, it is accessible over the internet globally. So, you know, they will give you like a DNS name if you create like your bucket and stuff like that. So the name must be unique. If, it, if it's not unique, it will throw you an error. So let me be a little bit creative and say, okay, uh, state five, state five buck. I'll just say buck. So, you know, I just want to be, if you use the same name like this, it's probably going to throw you an error. So, because I already use it. So, you know, just use any name, but again, we just create. So I want to enable versioning. I think it's required for this. Then I'm not doing anything. I will leave it as private. It doesn't have to be public. Um, then I will use it, leave it in my region. Then every other thing, that's it. Again, buckets is just like a storage stuff. So, you know, you can put information there. So let me see my bucket now. Um, this is the state file bucket. This is the bucket I just created. Again, bucket is just like a, maybe like a folder on AWS, you know. Again, I can upload things here directly from my computer. I can add a file, you know, do things, you know, a lot of, you know, just, just like when you have your maybe Google Drive or, you know, all those uh, iCloud or whatever. It's a storage, uh, this on AWS, but very, very important, very powerful. So this is my bucket now, and I'm going to use this bucket for my state file. So I'm just going to grab the name because I want to be very, uh, very specific. I don't want to make any mistake. So this is the name of the bucket. I, again, you know, you can see there's nothing there now. Then after we deploy our stuff, you're going to see what you are going to see right here. So I'm going back to my Terraform script. Then uh, we, okay, I already, I just pasted this feed now. So let me give it a, a good name and say, um, remote state file, um, S3 buckets. So just, you know, again, this, once you see all this uh, thing with, um, with a pound sign or hash, you know, some of us call it hash or pound. So, you know, it's a comment and, you know, your code will not execute it. You know, if you don't put that there, it will throw you an error. The Terraform will tell you that I don't understand this. So I'm just going to paste the name of my bucket. You know, again, you want you to see how this thing. So this part just means the name you want to give it. You know, there's nothing in the part. So I want to give it, I want to put it in a folder called DevOps. So this one will create a folder for me then I don't want all this. Um, so I'm just going to have a this thing. Then I will say um, uh, TF state. Okay, state. Let me just say state dot TF state. So basically, this is the name that um, this is the name that will come up in our S3 bucket, and that's what the key is. You know, this basically it will create a folder called Devop in our bucket. The inside that folder it will put our file there. So again, this is the only thing I have to change. The region um, in US is one, you know, I'm going to leave it as default. Again, region is something you can put in variable. And you know, you see we're making reference to region in many places, you know, these are why variables are cool to have. So that, you know, let's just leave that for now. Again, I define my stuff already here, remote states, just few lines of uh, this thing that I copied, you know, I didn't write it off my head. So, um, so I'm going to save it and let's see what happen when we do um, Terraform um, apply or whatever. So let's do Terraform, I don't like to type, okay. Okay, let's do Terraform plan and let's see what happen. Okay, so I will do Terraform plan. Let me put up my base code so that to be, okay. It's so initialization require Terraform init. So 
yeah, you see automatically uh, it, it noticed that I'm trying to use S3. You see successfully configure the backend S3. So uh, now say Terraform will automatically use this backend unless the backend configuration change. So by default, you know, it will store my state file right in that bucket. So uh, let's do Terraform plan now and Terraform apply, uh, Terraform plan. Yeah. Uh, okay. AWS, okay. So what happened is that in line 44, you know, I changed the name of my VPC. Um, where right here, it was main before, but you know, when I was trying to explain, I changed it to my VPC. And then on line 44, which uh, according to this thing, is still main dot main. So this should be my VPC, my that VPC, you know. Um, so that's a mistake because I I left it as main and they already I already changed the name. Yeah, you know, it should be AWS dot underscore VPC dot my VPC, which again, this is the name I gave it. You know, I can say Kenneth VPC, you know, and uh, but I have to make reference to it here, Kenneth VPC, if I want to use that. And anywhere I call that VPC, again, I have to do the same thing. So I'm going to save my changes and I'm going to run it again. So I think I'm just going to run Terraform plan. So hopefully we should be good now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you see, uh, it's telling us then that we plan to add five resources, zero change, zero deploy. You know, again, we're trying, we add in EC2 now, we add in VPC, we add in subnet. So, uh, and then, yeah, what again, then, you know, security group as well. So those are the five resources that we are adding. And um, so let's do Terraform apply and let's see what we got on the dashboard. So I'll do Terraform. Terraform apply. Um, so I don't like to do yes. So I say auto approve. So auto approve will not prompt you to answer yes or no. So um, so I just run this directly. So we should provision our infrastructure, and now the infrastructure should be our EC2 should be in a separate VPC, in a, in a, in, a, in an isolated VPC because. We already tell uh, Terraform to put it in in that VPC, you know, which we define right here in this subnet. You know, but let's see what we got. You know, let's see how we can make this. So, okay, you know, we are doing a lot of stuff now. That's why it's taking time. So, okay, we, everything went well, you know. Um, so let's go to our dashboard. Let's see what Terraform has done. So first, let's check this state file. Again, there's, there was nothing there when we created this bucket on S3 bucket. If I refresh it right here, let's see what we got. You see the, the folder, the folder came, um, the develop name, which is this, came in as a folder. So if I go all the way up again, no, I just want to show you uh, where the devop, you know, this came as a folder, then the other parts will come as the main file. So that's how the key works. If I put another slash here, so it will be like a folder inside the folder. So that's what key is in S3 bucket. So right now we have the uh, folder devop. If we open that folder, let's see what is there. You see the file, this is the state file. So it says type state file, you know, automatically you know that this is a state file. If I open it, I have to download it before I open it, unfortunately. So if I open it, you're going to see everything. And again, you know, every, all team member can work centrally with this file. You know, you don't have to store it on your, on your distance. So before I can open it, I need to download it. I can open it directly from the console. You see it's a JSON file. So it's a JSON file. Um, then, you know, when we open it, let's see what we got. So this is it here. So I open it and I open from my VS Code directly. You see, this is what I just created. This is what is coming from the S3 bucket. You see the name states.json. So, you know, this is what is coming from. And then, um, yeah, this was coming from the 
from the um, state file. So again, this is very important to know. Um, you know, this is how they store state file in um, in Terraform. S3 buckets. You know, there are again there are other options like Dynamo DB. You, I won't really advise you to bother. More. It's good to know. You know, know that okay, you can store it in. The, um, you know, just understand how one of them work. Uh, you know, you can talk about it uh, during your um, interview that, okay, how you store your state file. Again, you know, I if you are working with stuff like a um, Terraform Enterprise, you know, this state file, I think Terraform will manage it for you by default. So you may not have to worry about it, but, you know, in most cases, it may not be like that. But this is the state file and, Again, it's coming from our S3 bucket. So, uh, underscore, and then this is the bucket that we created. So, yeah. So now let's try and see. Then let's go and see. let's check our resources. This is just S3 bucket. Let's go to EC2 dashboard. Um, so, let me see EC2. So, let's go to our EC2 dashboard and see what Terraform created. Um, again, we we specify two resources to be created um, by Terraform and we tag it, you know, just like what we did before. But, you know, the only thing that changed now is the the VPC. We put it in another VPC. You know, the name is, you know, this is the name of what we deploy. Uh, these are the two instances. So if I click on one of them, let's see uh, some of the information there. You see the IP address the private IP address because we define 1.0.10.0.0.0 in our subnet. That's why you are seeing this, you know. By default, your AWS resources will start with 172. But this is a custom VPC. We are using a custom VPC now, the one we created by ourselves. So that's why you are seeing this. And this, this is what we specify. We specify this IP range of 10.0.0.0.0. And that's why I just give us one of it there. And uh, so if I go to networking session, none of I don't have to go to networking. You say this is the name of the one I created. You know, if I open it in another tab, um, right here, you see your VPC before, when we do your VPC before, we only saw one there. So now we this is the one telephone deploy for us. Terraform um, deploy this VPC for us and uh, automatically it puts some distance there. If I go to subnet also, you see one subnet that we created. This is the subnet we created. You see, it's different from other ones. This is the only subnet that we created actually with the name main. You know, again, if you go back to the code, you see the subnet there. Um, yeah, this is the subnet, the name as main. This is the tag, this is the name you are seeing right there. In the in the distant main, uh, again, all this one are defaults by AWS. Uh, we're able to deploy our distant on VPC again for VPC because if you try to access this server like this, you you not be able to access it because uh, you know again there are many things you need to do within VPC like NAT gateway uh, this thing. I'm not going to that in the class, you know. But again, this is just a basic VPC for you to see. If I click on this, you notice that it doesn't even have a, a public IP address because we we have to like define our internet gateway before this thing because this is a private um, subnet somehow, you know, the public. Uh, so it doesn't have a public IP address. So you can't access this on the internet. So, you know, there are so many configuration you have to do before, you know, your these instances can get on the, internet or you know um do some other stuff so like route table uh, NAT gateway and other stuff so again but you know just to understand how vpc work in the high level and the um yeah so we deploy that then what again of course our security group as well which we did and again this resources just mean one resource is this one resources this is another one resource you know like like that it's um so then we specify two right here then. Yeah, so any question before we, we, we try to see what modules look like? Yeah, I just wanna ask like, um, so now we have, we have, um, we have put our state files 
our Terraform state. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. We put our cells, Terraform state files in um, S3 bucket. So if anytime you make changes, does it refresh automatically in, state yes, in the yes. S3? Yes, it does. Automatically, it does. Automatically, yeah. Okay, I... but, but we have to we have to leave the um script like on number five here. We have to leave the script as it is, I think. Yes, yes, it has to be there. Yeah, you have to leave it. If you re remove this, that one will store it. If you store like, the last, just the last one that you, you exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, but anytime any changes we make, you know, Terraform will update that file. You know, we update that uh that that file you are seeing on the S3 bucket, which I just showed. So we okay. update it. And again, you know, this is a teamwork that, you know, like maybe five of you are working on this script or, you know, whatever. So anybody that make that changes automatically to come to this central because every, if, uh, it, will be, it will be a single S3 bucket. It's not like every member we have their own S3 bucket. You are, okay. It's a centralized S3 bucket that everybody we have access to. So any changes done there, you know, you, you will see it you know, someone working from Chicago office, they do Terraform apply, they will see it also, you know, okay. they, they will, um, yeah, do everything. If you check the timestamp here, you know, if I do like, if I modify it again and do this thing, you see the, the date stamp, the time stamp here will, will be updated. So, you know, and okay. then, yeah, so yeah, you have to leave the code there and then, yeah, it's, uh, it's there for life. So, yeah. And then the, um, the subnet, the subnet yeah. aspect, if you want to make it like more than one, you can just add counts or... Mm, okay, that's a good question for the subnet. Let me see. Um, um, yeah. I believe we should be able to... Uh, so this side up block, let me, let me check the documentary. This side up block, I'm sure we should be able to... Well, I believe there is a um, public and private subnet, right? Yeah, 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 there but, is. But we only created like a public subnet. Yeah, there's a private subnet, actually. The private yeah. subnet, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, you just name it as public AWS subnet. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, I just give it this name. Yeah, sorry. Mm, yeah, okay. Again, you know, before you can make this private, there are many things you need to do, you know, like, you know, you we need to add like NAT gateway. Yeah, um, NAT gateway. Yeah, know. we need to add internet gateway um you know on the at the vpc level we need to configure a route table, route you know, table yeah. do all those all those stuff so you know it's uh, by the end of this script you'll be having a lot of uh, stuff you know before you can have a fully working vpc yeah so so like in a collaborative um, environment now yeah how do you know like are you going to be given a particular task say okay you are the one you are just going to provision VPC is or it's just to the provision on EC3 instance or you understand what I'm saying because yeah. it's a lot of you that are working on one script. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean it's a, it's not something you just go there to and make all these changes and okay, maybe VPC you just you just add in more um subnets to the VPC or you know mostly most in most cases. It's a lot of meeting that will have been, you know, okay, okay. talked about all this thing. That, okay, this is what we want to do. There, there will be like even network people specializing in most of all these things, you know, that will be like, okay, this is what we are trying to do. These are the, these are, because you see, this side that range is very critical. You know, if I had another subnet now, I have to be very careful, you yeah. know, not to overlap because if, if, if I put just a random number there, it can mm -hmm. overlap, it will cause a conflict, it won't even work, you know, or maybe it will throw an error. So those things are very, something you have to be, not something someone will just jump on and just be adding all those stuff or that default. And in most environment, they probably have all these things in place, you know, and uh, they also okay, so, like, so, so like they would have defined the side up? Yeah, yeah, in most cases. And okay. for example, now in this case, now maybe uh, this, this um, subnet, you are looking at now the the application they are deploying there is getting big because what happened is that this last 24 is just telling us that we can only have uh two raised to power eight ip addresses for within this subnet yeah you know? yeah so that's about um i think 64 or 32 ip address that you can have with slash 
24. 24. So, exactly. So now if the company is growing, they are having, they want to put a lot of server there, you know, that means okay. they need to like change this to maybe slash 20 or maybe slash 16. Some, no, they can't use slash 16. Uh, I think, no, they can't use, maybe slash 20 or slash 22, something a little bit. Uh, because slash 24, it's getting to the slash 24, it's just telling you that you can only have 255 IP because you can only change this zero. Okay. You can only go from zero to 255 with slash 24. So, okay. you know, those things are very, very important. If you have, for example, slash 32, you can't even change anything there. This yeah. is just a one IP address you can have a single and, you know, just like exact, exact. You can't change anything there within the subnet. So, you know, those things are depending, a lot of conversation have to go in there in terms of planning that, okay, you know, this subnet, we are trying to grow. We're trying to assign more IP with it. Again, they will have multiple subnets. So if you give one subnet too much space, yeah. the other one, you are shrinking them because everything is under VPC. Everything okay. is under slash 64. You, you only have these two to play with. You only have these two uh, zeros, this last two zero to play with. So if you are giving one of the subnet too much, um, too much IP address, you have to consider you are shrinking the space of other ones because okay. again, yeah. So just again, you guys, you can just read more. Um, it could be a bit um, IP um, side range. It's kind of a very, yeah. That's, that's the most confusing uh, sorry. part of that. Hello, sorry, Kenny. Please, where do you get all these symptoms that you edit? Ah, uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, you they sleep for class. Yeah, I just show you. These are these are. Look at the it's on, it's on Terraform. Um, yeah, it's on Terraform. It's look, on, at I, the, I, look at the subnet I just showed you. You know, uh, it, everything is, you know, again, they used to say, don't reinvent the wheel. You don't need to stress yourself in. Yeah, I can decide that. Okay, they said this option is, they define everything for me right here. I'll send I'll send the video to you because I also watch the video. Right okay, now. okay, yeah, yeah. I'll you send know. it to the group. So yeah, so I can decide that I want to add availability zone. Maybe it's required from the job. You know, but you know, from the template, they don't even have it. But I know where I can I can add it, and you know, I know because right here they tell me that okay, uh, it's optional feed, but you can put it. So I can go to my code there, and this is for subnets, right? So I can go to my code there and say, okay, I want to add availability zone. So I'll just put it, I just hit enter and paste it here. Then I know the centers. Then I say, okay, um, US. I think it's one day. I don't know how they define available. You know, stuff like this. But again, the, the main thing is understanding. So right now, automatically, it will, because now we didn't specify availability zone, it will just put it in a random availability zone. So if yeah, you are doing, exactly, yeah. Yeah, if you are doing this on the console, you see it too. You see all this option there. So, but now I'm like fixing it that, okay, I want it on US East one. So again, I'm just telling you how you can just go to uh, use some of what this documentation. This is how they write them. There's nothing, you know, I just put them together. But the main thing was telling me that this side that block is required. That's not optional. The VPC ID is required. So, you know, it's for you to like figure out and they put a template there for you to use. Okay, this dot, this dot ID. Well, um, you know, um, again, everything, you don't reinvent the wheel, it's always, you know, all the information are there for you to, to put together, you know, depending on what you want to do. And then you have your code. It looks like I write it is something lined up to be, you know, right? It's not like uh, this thing, put this from here, join them together, but maintain, you know, understanding them and know how to like tweak it and then uh, uh, make it um, do what you want them to do. So then apart from that, there's nothing, again, you know, I shared the link to the documentation. You know, you can, on the left here, you see all those options. You see the VPC, the one I just did. You know, you see security group, the long one that we did the other day. You see it's the same thing with this you are looking at here. You just make all those changes or whatever, blah, blah. So there's nothing, yeah. You don't reinvent the wheel. It's, um, um, it's always what they say, you know, just, there are so many the information, documentation, everything there. Um, out there. Um, and you see all these dots I was talking about, the dot ARN, these are, you know, 
these are the things what they call attributes reference. You know, this is where I say dot id vpc dot main dot id aw underscore vpc dot main dot id. So this will just give you the idea of the vpc. This will give you the arm of the vpc. You know, um, maybe you want something else. You know, yeah, these are very again every tool has documentation. What they call doc. You know, uh, every tool. You know, Kubernetes. You know. Everything Jenkins, they are very useful. But understanding how to use them is very important. You know, it's uh, because you won't see you won't see direct uh, direct uh, things that we just fit in your situation like that. You just have to like join this to this. You know, do know how to edit, know how to um, yeah, know how to do all this stuff. But uh, apart from that, it's uh, it's always know what to change, what not to change. For example. I can't change this AWS uh, underscore instance. You know, it's what you have to use on the Terraform template. You know, I can give this any name I want. You know, I know that. That's why I give it any name. I, like this one, if you change it, you're in trouble. It's not going to work. So, you know, just understand all those basic stuff and then you'll be good. Um, any question before we do a little bit uh, modules and let's see how modules work and then, yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah, you may, you may just share the, the this thing, the, the video. You can take a look, you know, I don't think it's more than 10 hours video. No, okay. it's just like two hours. Oh, it's two it's, hours. It's just exactly like what you... Oh, okay. okay. So, but the guy also, um he spinned up like a VPC with okay. some Terraform. So I already okay. went through that one before. Okay, okay. Okay, yeah. Yeah, two hours is not bad. You know, Terraform is very, very... Like it's very huge in the in the in the industry. You know, something you know I want you to understand very well. Uh, now we can push our gate, uh, code to the GitHub and you know do all those cool stuff. But now let's try and put our variable file somewhere different. So um, one of the best way they do it is you know again I'm just going to create a file here. You know this is the same thing as me going to my dashboard right here and right click. Um, how do I go create a file? So uh, I'm just right click. Let me find. Oh, man. Okay, so how can I create a file? Okay, but um, yeah, I'm just going to create a file directly from here. Then I will call it. Um, I'll call it variable dot tf which is the uh, name they use for this thing. So what we're trying to do is that, you know, we're trying to like separate all these scripts. Again, you don't want to put everything inside one script like this, you know, it's not the best practice. You want to use modules, you want to use other stuff. So, um, so I will do variable uh, dot tf. So yeah, again, this is just a file I'm creating, but right inside the same uh, directory. Uh, that I'm working in, I'm working in this uh, directory. So if I go to my to my file explorer now, okay. Okay, if I go to my, so yeah, this is the file I just created now, variable.tf. So the one I'm going to do now is I'm going to, um, all my variable, I only have variable again, you know, in, in some instances, I'm going to just uh, cut it off from here. Um, then I'm going to, I'm going to put it in this file right here. So again, you know, the same thing, not a chain, but you know, we're trying to break the, the code, you know, you, this is how you do, you want to do it in the real world. You can have a lot of them, a lot, you know, I've seen company with, you know, like 15 variables or, you know, different variables. You just be calling them, making reference to the variable. So, but, you know, you can do this, you know, just keep it in this thing. And um, again, you know, our code is a little bit lesser now. You know, um, we remove the variable directly from our code now. So uh, let's see if it's still going to work. Um, let me do Terraform. Terraform plan.
a variable name to synthesize. Uh, a variable name to synthesize. I don't, did I, maybe I didn't save this thing, let me see. Yeah, sometimes just make sure you save it there. Let me see, I don't know what it's talking about. And then, so um, yeah, you say it's working. Yeah, the way it's supposed to work now, but again, the only thing I did was just, um, you know, move the variable from the from the main script, you know, again, these are best practices. These are the way they do it in the industry. You separate all those things and they kind of uh, make them to um, to talk to each other. So again, you know, the same thing, you know, to work if I deploy this and, you know, I don't think I want to deploy it, but, you know, just show you how you separate some of all these things. The other one is, let's see modules, how modules is defined. So what I want to do is, you know, I tried it, um, you know, I tried to bake everything into modules, but it's kind of, it doesn't really work. So I want to, you know, again, I will create a folder now. So then I'll call the folder, I'll create a folder, um, not a file this time. I create a folder, then I call it security group um, because I want to move my security group script. I want to move it to a separate um, file, which we call modules. Then I'll call it. I'll call it in the, in this main file. Then you know you get to see how that works. And again, these are best practices. These are how they do this. So I'll say security group. So this is the name of my folder. This is a folder, you know, again, empty folder for now. So inside the folder, um, let me just copy my um, my security group part. Take that heads at this point. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to copy this. Then inside this, I want to create a file. Is this a file? Yeah, file. So I'll call it sg.tf. You know, it can be any name, it doesn't matter. So I'm inside sg.tf now. So I'm pasting this there. So again, you know, what I'm doing is that I'm trying to reduce my scripts. I don't want, I don't want this. So basically I will delete this out of my, okay, it's not going. Um, so this I will I'll kind of delete it, you know. So, you know, you see my code now reduced drastically. Again, all these resources, you can put them as a module. But again, you can be, you have to be very careful. Modules can be a bit complicated to, you know, when you're calling modules and calling the other one. So, you know, my code reduced that. So let's see what we can do to, this is the main code, you know, forget this, uh, this security group is in a separate folder. So let me, let me save it first. If I go to my, um, I'm still going to work on this security group. This is the variable, you know, in a separate folder. This security group is in the folder. Let me go to my file directly so that you see what I'm doing. So this is the file, this is the main script. And then this is the one I just created now. This is the folder I created. Then I store, I store the security group feed there. You know, I can create another folder. You know, I can create another folder, for example, um, which I'm not really going to. I can create another folder. Um, okay, no, this is a file. I'm not creating a file. I can create another folder right here, and then I call it uh, instances, or you know, instances, something like this. Then inside there, I can have, I can have another file um, that we have my AWS, uh, that we have my EC2 resources there, which would be this guy right here. Um, so basically that we have there, then I will just make reference to them and stuff like that. So you can have, these are what they call modules. These are modules, uh, these are modules, these are modules, you know, these are modules, these are modules. So let's see how we can make reference to it. Because in our script now, we don't have EC2, we are not calling EC2 at all, you know, uh, sorry, we are not calling security group. So how can we, how can we make reference to security group on, from our code, from our main code? These are main code now, you know, yeah, these are main code. So just, um, just understand this. So now, I want to do it here. The syntax to call a module is very, very simple. You know, very simple. And again, they call it call. So it's something like this. 
you know, um, yeah, yeah, man. OPC, uh, security group. Okay, so let me define it here. So you do something like module like this. So let me use this to add myself. So you just have to give it a name. You can give it any name. I will say, okay, um, mode security go or something. You can give it any name. So what you need to define here is the source. So you are now telling Terraform, where is this modules? Because now I want to call, I want to call my script. So um, I'm not telling script that, okay, where is my module? So here I will define a path. You know, I will say path to modules. So this is the format to like define a modules and just to this thing. So with this two line now, you know, I will have security group deploy within my code. You know, whereas the code itself is somewhere stored. Again, this is stored here now. You can have it anywhere. Terraform themselves, they have they have a modules you can call directly. You know, you can and you know you would, you can do a lot of stuff even with Terraform, which they call Terraform registry. You know, they have a lot of stuff there. You can just pull out, you know. So these modules can be anywhere. It can be somewhere on your computer, like my own now. This particular module is somewhere. So I will just call it, and you know, I will expect it to like deploy security group for me, you know. So, the, so now I will need to specify the part, which is uh, what you have to do um, now. So the source will be, um, dot slash the sec group, sec that group. Um, so basically what we're saying is that dot means current working directory. I'm telling you that my, uh, the location of this file, it's in my current working directory as, and it's inside a folder called sec dash group. This is that folder I'm making reference to here. Again, I'm inside there. I'm writing script inside this main dot this thing. And I'm making reference to what is inside this place because all these things I want them to be, I want them to be in my code. You know, the main I want I want the the modules to to appear within my infrastructure. But I don't want to write all the script. The script is written somewhere and somewhere. So you know, a lot of people can make reference to this several times. It's allowed that flexibility. It reduces your code. Again, all this one too, we can do them like that. Some there we can put them as a modules and just have two line or three line modules. This then we just call it. Then this one too. At the end of the day, we may not have more than ten line of uh, of twenty line lines of uh, code. So modules is very powerful. And again, you know, not just in Terraform, in every uh, uh, programming this thing. Let's see what we can do with this. I'm sure it's going to throw a better than we go to um, then. One thing we need to add there is that if you, um, okay, okay. So from this, our, um, if you notice from this, our, um, this line 42 now, we're making reference to a security group, you know, we're making reference of this security group, which we have reduced to modules right here. This security group is not a modules, but we are making reference to it here. Now this will not work because it doesn't understand this. It's assuming that this security group should be right here and it's not here. So for that, in our security group, we need to define another feed uh, in our modules, original modules. We need to define another feed they call output. So output, we can give it a name. Um, so output, we, we kind of like, so what we want to um, do with output is that we want to like tell outputs to like output the, ID of this uh, security group because we need it. If we don't need it, we probably don't. We need the um, security group ID right here. So we are going to use output. And again, in most cases, they have they can have output file. So the field you need to define here is value. So then I would say uh, the value I need is AWS underscore security group dot allow underscore HTTP then dot ID. So that's the value I did. I'll say AWS underscore uh, security group dot allow. Okay, I think I see the option there. 
Hmm. Yeah, looks good. No, but I'm sure this will probably throw an error. Yeah, but uh, yeah, okay, let's see. Um, but let's go to our bin uh, Terraform script again. So now here we need to change this. So we need to change this to modules dot um, modules dot mod, which is this guy. I'm making reference to this guy. So modules dot mod dot sg then dot. So now we are going to make reference to this output name. Okay, I've not given it a name. Um, SJ out. So I'll just say SJ out in my main script. Where's my main script? SJ SJ out. So now what I'm doing is that I'm making reference to these modules. Then I'm making reference to the output output feed right here. I know it's a little bit complicated, but you know, don't, don't stress too much about that. Just understand how modules work and uh, what it does. So I think now let's see if this thing will work. Let me save this. And then I'm going to save this too. Um, okay, sorry. Your, in the main, the main .tf, the line 35, the, yeah. the, the part, Okay, you are just going to end with the with the uh, with the folder. Yeah, yeah, just okay. the folder. Yeah, so just the folder. Okay, yeah. we are not going to include the file. No, no, just the folder. Yeah. Just, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, just the folder. In most cases, you only want to have in the folder. You only have want to have one kind of resources there. That's why I say in some cases we can create like instances folder and just put our IC two there. Then here it will be slash instances so you know yeah you don't yeah you're not going to so i have to do it bit i have to do terraform in it because i just added uh this you know i'll do terraform in it it has to like initialize the the sources let me do terraform plan now for the sources allow bpc must not be declared in modules dot mod. We define our VPC here. In the resource AWS, yeah. So what what happened here is that now we defining our uh, VPC ID, and we are making reference to the VPC that is in another that is in the main TF. So that's why it's throwing this error. So I'm still trying to find a way around this. Actually, you know, because now we have this in a separate folder completely. But we, this reference we are doing now is where we add it there. So um, let me see, maybe this will have to be a module dot. Because we have got to declare, declare a module dot. So, so, yeah. I understand the, I understand the problem then. Other thing I can just do is let's just um I'm trying to call this VPC information in the in the modules in the in the in the other modules I define. So and that's why this. Let me see, Terraform validates. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, reference to undeclared resources. Yeah, we, I'm sure what we can do to this. I think I will, I will, I will still work on this lab and see. And then again, the but the, the error is trying is, is trying at us now is that um, this right here, I'm making reference to this in this line four, I'm making reference to the VPC ID and the VPC is not in this file completely. The AWS VPC is in another folder completely. So there's a way I should be able to make reference to the VPC that's inside this main.tf. Um, yeah, so, Mm. Yeah, so I should be able to make reference to that BPC in main.tf. Let's see, what if we copy uh, BPC? Um, and, okay. Unless we just want to remove BPC completely, I can remove BPC completely. And just comment the feed out. Hmm. Just comment it out. So submit ID, comment this out, remove this. And then security bill. Okay, comment this out. Okay, let me just save it. Okay. Let me run Terraform and do it again. And uh, let's see what happens. I just removed the VPC feed completely. Let me validate it and see if everything is working. So I think it runs well now. And then if I do Terraform plan, so it'll probably destroy some resources because now I just removed the VPC feed. But again, the main thing here, yeah, you know, I'm just trying to line 42 resources, AWS, can I VPC, Mago's VPC out. Oh man. Oh, okay. So, is this a string? Set of string required. Uh, I think I've messed up with this code base. Yeah, okay, it's working now. I just made some man apply. So, but again, you know, the main thing with modules is, you know, um, we just, now we're able to remove the security group feed. We put it in another folder. I had to like so I had to like comment out the the uh, VPC part of it. So by default, it will it will just deploy to a de default VPC now. But again, I'm just trying to show the um, security graph. I will I'll definitely troubleshoot this and see how I can call it directly from here. So but that was the problem. But I I removed the VPC part. You know, now it will just deploy the stuff in the default VPC. But we make use of the modules in this feed. We call the modules directly and they, you know, it work the way it's supposed to work. It's going to create a VPC and uh, sorry, it's going to create a security group, attach it to the EC2. 
then do the normal stuff. So, um, yeah, I couldn't get the VPC to work for. I would definitely troubleshoot, um, do research on how I can call the the other VPC ID that's in another folder yeah, because that's the error is given me. And, um, yeah, just understand. You know, now you know we reduce the script considerably. We we take out the um, variable file to another location. Then we we took out the security group path as well to another location. So you know, so our main script itself is just this, um, which again, it um, it's lesser compared to what we have before. And all this one too, we can put them as modules. I can put this in another folder and just call it just like I call this guy, and everything will work. Um, then, yeah, it's working the way it's supposed to work, except the VPC parts that I have to like remove. So I will see, I will troubleshoot on that, and then we'll see. But um, apart from that, everything works the way it's supposed to work. If you check our state file right here, you see, you see uh, updated, uh, updated uh, stuff, updated um, TF states. Then if we go to our EC2, our EC2 should be in default VPC now because we removed the VPC we created before. So if I go to VPC now, uh, no VPC run, our VPC is not running yet. Okay, we have two of them running now. So if you if you see the networking path now, it's still on the, still, this is the whole VPC. Well, anyway, I think it's still, it's still on that whole one. I don't know. It's supposed to be okay. It's still destroying stuff anyway. Yeah, it's kind of like destroying the old VPC, this, um, destroy the subnet, and you know, it will it will now deploy it, attach them to the new VPC. So. That's why it's taking time then. Yeah, apart from that, you know, just understand modules and how, how this thing works. Again, these are the framework for Terraform. You're going to have all this thing. You're going to have uh, output. Output, in most cases, you have it in a separate file too. You can have it separate file output.tf. And then, yeah, stuff like that. No, yeah, any question, guys? I know there's a lot of stuff. Don't don't feel too overwhelmed. Yeah, um, I yeah. want to ask. Yeah. Okay. First of all, you know, like when we're writing our script, we use the um, IAM ID that we used to. Yeah. That we used to ask to access. I mean, I think so. There are secret. Um, yeah. 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 So, like in a professional environment, mm. yeah. the, every um, engineer will have his own IAM, or are we using like? No, no, they. They use in the real world, they use uh, what they call um, a zoom row. So, a zoom row, okay, yeah, okay. They use all this a zoom row, you know, because that's the best practice there, you know. So, it's the credentials, it, credentials of the row you now use. Exactly. So, it, it should create like a temporary, what they call session, like a token. Okay. So, okay. it's those credentials that each uh, um, each member can use and the other stuff to authenticate in those environments. Yeah. Okay, and then all this while we're making all these changes, it um it also saves to S3, like all these set groups, the all these modules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything, yeah, everything is saved. We're going to check it. Just like take it time because it's destroying the uh, VPC we created before. You know, okay. that, yeah, it's destroying that 10.0.0 VPC because okay. we, we remove it now. So it's destroying it, destroying the subnet, then you know, then it will attach the uh, EC2. Matter of fact, we have to like create another VP EC2. Um, they see a lot of destroy going on there. So destroying everything, then you know, recreating them, attach it to the new environment there. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay, these are the variable, uh, the variable you created on this other side. Is it, um, is, is it just a file or did you create? Because yeah, yeah. I, I, it's no, just a file. There's no, there's no uh, directory. No, it's not. It's in the same directory as your main main. As the main. Yeah. Oh. So 
if I go to my, let me go to my file uh, on my computer directly and just show you that. Um, okay, my Terraform. So okay, okay, for stuff like variable, you don't need to put them in. No, order. no, you don't need. Yeah, you don't. So. Matter of fact, variable main dot tf. That's how you will see the book in most company, in most uh, this thing. You are going to see three files: variable dot tf, main dot tf, output dot tf. In most cases, that's how you see the three of them. Then the modules might be in a, in different folders, you know, stuff like that. But the the one. And the directory, you'll be running your code directly. You'll be running the Terraform, apply, or whatever. We, we have the, those uh, variable.tf, main.tf, then uh, probably out, output.tf if you want to do that. So I mean, yeah. people can put everything together depending on the, you know, in a professional, especially in the big, in the big setup, you know, they, they break everything down. So, yeah. Yeah, the, it, it's not, it's directly in the main uh, folder, in the variable. Yeah, just like you're saying it, it's directly in the, this, the main, and this, the, this, the TF state, the old one. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. Any question, guys? Yeah, Terraform, yeah, check that video that you may drop, you know, at the, you know, the, the documentation, you know, is what you made the lot of on the job. You know, I can't overemphasize it. You know, I share the link as well. You know, check documentation. You know, you can. Yeah, because in that video, the guy also is even with the, the guy will just go to Terraform, you search maybe if you want to create security yeah. group, you just yeah. type it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's as simple you, as that. everything is. It doesn't come from his head. You just have to search for it and. But yeah, and you, format. yeah. If you. Okay. you so you watch a lot of uh, tutorials. It's always like that, you know. It's uh, you, nobody. Uh, you can't. There are so many things you know. You want to crowd. You want to kill yourself. So, so all uh, the folders, all these folders that we are using, is it already like? Do uh, we already have it in the Terraform or what? No, no, no. You have to create it. Yeah, we're creating it. We're creating it and putting everything. Terraform is just working on the background. <laughs> Terraform is just on your computer. You, we have a Terraform running on this computer now that's why we can okay. do this so that's why we can run all those terraform whatever but all these things even if you don't have terraform installed on your computer you can still write this code just that it will not work it will not do anything so but this code we are just we just created the folder directly see my see my computer I just right click create a folder you know name it main.tf you know then start writing that's it you know then i created this folder again this is the other one I just created now. The, the because it's always sweet when you are doing it now. But if I want to do it on my own, <laughs> so <laughs> maybe I don't start. <laughs> yeah. I will it's, alpha. It's, it's like you understand the stuff. Huh? I go check like that. That I go guy check not chairman now. Maybe it's not chairman. It's, it's not chairman. See, it's not chairman because one thing about this is like it's it's simple. It's just you know. All these scripts, you are not um, you are not cramming it in your head. You get it's just the format. Even me too. While I'm doing it, I'm watching the video and I'm following the steps. Yeah, I'm 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 very proud. And of I also of watched that video too because somebody sent it, and I said that it's exactly the same thing that Kenneth was even even before Kenneth talked about variable folder. I watched it in that video and I'm like, the guy created a different folder for variables, and you know, so it's just basically the same thing. But that one too will also help. To watch it yeah yeah i mean again you know those things are very there there's a subscription on terraform alone you know <laughs> yeah you know which again i can i encourage you guys if you because when you start interviewing they like terraform so much in the industry they will ask you questions you know they ask you about state file all the stuff you know they, they like it a lot you know so i can guarantee you 80 percent they will ask you on terraform and you know it's also good to talk about as like a project you work down, like, okay, I wrote some Terraform script, everything. Uh, again, no one write all this thing off their head. Just, um, yeah, you make reference to, but again, you really need to understand. It's not uh, because you won't see something that will 100% fit into your, your case, into what you want to do, your project. So you have to know how to manipulate uh, all this documentation, how to like, okay, change this 
you know, make reference to this, all those stuff. You know, apart from that, you know, you know, the other thing, just understand the concept. The other, these are, these are just files you are just created on the computer. That's it.